you got to be excited first. If you're not excited about what you're doing, then it becomes a grind. And there is still grinds within the within within even your excitement that you're doing because it's it's kind of relentless. Um, and I talk about relentless execution too, because again, if you're not relentless about the execution, it's not going to be what you want. But um, I, I do think so much of it is 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 you know probably in one word, which is really passion. And if you're really passionate about what you do, and it really means a lot to you, and it means a lot to other people and to your organization uh, and the consumer, hopefully, um, you're you're kind of you know the, like I said that that hamster in your head is constantly spinning around on that wheel to the point of some time that it could be distracting in a meeting because you're thinking about something else. Um, or, or you're not just, you know, you're not resting the way you need to do because that wheel's turning as well. But, um, I think passion is passion for me, I think is, is what drives anybody who's creative, anybody who you don't even have to be creative to be passionate because you can just be passionate about, uh, you know, something that you're involved with. It could be a philanthropic thing that you do and you're so passionate about it. I think it's that waking up and eating, drinking, breathing, sleeping, what you do and having that be um, something that also rubs off on a lot of other people. And I don't I always say to my teams, you know, do what I say, not what I do. And I don't expect everybody to do it at the level or at the 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 pace sometimes that I do. Um, But I do expect them if they are passionate to have those wheels turning, at least within those work hours, for sure. What have you learned um, in the work that you're doing around how to effectively turn emotion and passion Mm -hmm. into actual action? I think I've really learned by listening. Um, I'm grateful to be surrounded by mentors of mine, whether they're people I know personally or people that I watch in admiration um, from organizers who have used their passion and literally created movements. And so I I think I pull most of my inspiration from the people who are doing the on the ground organizing because it's, it's tedious work um, that requires infrastructures that they set up by themselves and so taking from that model um, I, I see how you need that passion there in order to activate people and what I've learned from them is that in your specificity you're actually doing more and I, I see by the people that inspire me that they're really focusing in on specific stories whether it's prison abolition whether it's trans rights whether it's the environment I think it's been um, a through line that people are more effective when you're able to be so specific. And so similarly, when I'm using my voice to speak, it's been important for me to even keep in mind, how can I be specific? How can I leave people with action steps? How do I even create action steps for myself? How do we increase awareness to these are your tools to enact your voice in the world? Because it isn't a matter of saying this is why you should care. There's so much happening that you can't not care. If you're not doing something that you love to do, Find something that you love to do because it will make your whole life different. Many people, as I did at the beginning, got stuck with a job that I really didn't like. I would never have stayed with that job or if I had to financially, I would have stayed with that job and been an unhappy, mediocre lawyer in in a world where I could never have had the confidence of doing a great job. For you, for your children, boys and girls, find something that you're naturally good at, figure out how to make a living at it. Nurture those, those of you who run businesses, who have women in their businesses, you have to realize that they're doing a whole lot of stuff. That doesn't mean you have to cut them a whole bunch of slack. It means you're supposed to demand excellence. That's what got you to run your own business. But make sure you're doing something that you love to do. And if you can't do it as a vocation, for whatever reason, do it as an avocation. Um, Something that gives you pure satisfaction is something that gives you confidence. If you can't do it every day from nine to five, learn the tango. (laughs) Do something spectacular for your soul. Uh, I find that I'm having the time of my life at 74. I just watched... Uh, an HBO documentary that was made by Carl Reiner, who was, I think, 97, and a wonderful comedian. For the, those of you who don't know who Carl Reiner is, he, he's Rob Reiner's father. And for those of you who don't know who Rob Reiner is, 
Oh my God, I can't believe you don't know who Rob Reiner is. <laughs> uh, but his documentary is called, If You're Not in the Obit, Eat Breakfast. And it really said every stage in life can be an adventure. You don't have to be defined. If you didn't make it in your 20s, you can make it in your 30s. And if you didn't make it in your 30s, you can make it in your 40s. And if you didn't make it in your 40s, you can make it in your 50s. And just remember Grandma Moses. You know who that is? Oh, please tell me you remember Grandma Moses. She was a painter. And she didn't start painting until, I think, in her 80s. And one of the most prolific painters. It's never too late. Never too late. Never so too have late. fun. That's what it's all about.